Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Booth. Brian David Marshall here with R&D member Ian Duke, and we are about to watch the start of day two here at Pro Tour Battle for Zendikar. We've watched them draft, but now we're going to watch them play. we got Paulo Vitor Domodorosa ranked number 18 right now in the top 25 Magic Pro rankings against number 24, Matthew Sperling. So we're ready to send it down to the floor and watch all the action. Hello and welcome to the start of day two here at Pro Tour Battle for Zendikar. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm joined by Ian Duke, and we are about to watch what we like to call a doozy. <laughs> this is, there you see Matthew Sperling. He's currently ranked number 24 in the top 25 pro uh, player rankings, and he is facing off against Hall of Famer, nine-time Pro Tour top eight competitor, uh, you know, just one of the most feared players in the game, Paulo Vitor Damo de Rosa. Set the stage for us, Ian Duke, as far as what these guys are doing. So we watched Paulo draft earlier. He ended up in a red-blue sort of devoid deck. Uh, he's much heavier on red. He's got a little bit of blue as well. Um, pretty good curve. Quadruple Kozilek Sentinel. Uh, triple Nettle Drone. We'll see how that plays out for him. On the other side, we have Matt Sperling. He drafted a black-white life gain deck. And when I say life gain, he is very much centered around light gain, life gain. He has double Stonehaven Medic, which is the uncommon build around that puts plus one, plus one counters on your creatures when you gain life. And at rare, he has Defiant Bloodlord, which causes your opponent to lose life when you gain life. And he's got plenty of ways to gain life in his deck. All right. While, while we were doing that, a Kozilek Sentinel came down for Paulo Vita Damodorosa, and it stonewalled an Expedition Envoy, Envoy, but Serene Steward may be able to uh, mount a little bit of a, a threat here. So every time uh, Matt gains life, he's able to pay white and make a creature a little bit bigger mm -hmm. permanently. There you look at Paulo's hand. He's got another Sentinel, a Nettle Drone, an Andu Champion, and a, and, a, and a handful of land. So he doesn't have anything right now that's going to interact with that uh, life gain ability. Get rid of get rid of that uh, engine if it gets started. There you see the blue. There's the Nettle Drone. Wow. There you see Sperling playing Unified Front. We saw that he's splashing a uh, Prairie Stream just for that Unified Front in his deck list. No, no, no blue cards, just doing it for the Converge. See an interesting card here being played, Vampiric Rites. Something I haven't seen too much so far this weekend. Yeah, I mean, you see, you see that card go 14th sometimes in a draft. But sacrifice a creature, pay two mana, and you get to gain a life and draw a card. Yeah, it's a pretty nice way to sort of cash in cheap creatures or tokens that you have lying around. And importantly for Matt's deck, it does gain him life. Yeah, and you can also do it at... Uh, Instant speed, so it actually foils, like if your opponent's playing something like Touch of the Void, looking to get their uh, ingest engine going, you can uh, foil it with that. And he just... It's interesting, the Vampiric Rites is, is going to make combat pretty difficult for Paulo as this game goes on. Because of that Serene Steward being able to gain life um, at instant speed and put plus one, plus one counters on creatures at instant speed. But in the meanwhile, here comes the Andu champion. <laughs> Matt's like, I'll get it back later. That's fine. I'll take it. All right. Sperling untaps. He's still on three land here. Got that Nirkana Assassin. Also plays into uh, the life gain engine. And then, <laughs> there's the belligerent Whiptail from Paulo Vitor Damodorosa. So he was not able to actually cut it at the end of spring training like he had hoped. That's right. He actually, I think he ended up playing both as belligerent Whiptails. Wow. There you see Sperling, who's still on three land, which is four away from being able to play a Defiant Bloodlord. 
It's also got a Bone Splinters, the Sheer Drop, five mana Demon's Grasp. And Sperling with the Life Key deck has fallen to 14. Yeah, Apollo actually able to mount a pretty serious offense here between the Shatter Skull Recruit and the Belligerent Whiptail. I think he has an additional land in his hand to trigger landfall this turn. So we'll probably see an attack. I wonder if Sperling is going to go into sort of chump block mode and start cycling his creatures from the battlefield with Vampiric Rites. Uh, maybe trying to hit additional land drops and kind of get things going a little bit more for his deck. You see Apollo stuck on one island with the Ugin's Insight kind of waiting. And, uh, you know, Paul, Paul's like, you know what? I You can gain Death Touch. You can make something bigger. I'm just going to play a Kozilek Sentinel. I'm going to ping you with the Nettle Drone beforehand. I'm going to untap my Nettle Drone. Uh, I, I don't know what you're going to do, but I, I see no reason to give you some way to start dealing with my creatures. Look like Paulo may have passed the turn there, yeah. perhaps playing around something like Encircling Fisher. Yeah. Two cards still, right? And it looks like we're going to see Matt Sperling start to use that Vampiric Rites. <laughs> so we got a game update. It sounds like uh, John Finkel, uh, who's playing on one of the back tables against Dan Ward at 6-2. and two. John Finkel is up a game. So there you go. Yeah, he's going to sacrifice the Expedition Envoy, uh, draw a card, gain a life, and then... Uh, Pays white and gets to put a counter on the Nirkana Assassin. That's pretty saucy. Serene Steward, ladies and gentlemen. It's so weird that you gain life off of vampiric rights. Yeah, it was actually something we added uh, kind of sort of at the last minute. Not at the last minute, but we, we buffed the card along the way. All right, unified front. Get two allies. And is that a blighted step there? Yeah. Sure. It so gets two allies. He's going to be able to uh, sacrifice those, ideally. Yeah, that's really what you want to be doing with Vampiric Rites, is sacrificing tokens rather than actual creatures that cost you cards. Right. Ideally, Scions. and Got another quick update uh, from the back tables. Christian Calcano playing Jacob Wilson. Both those young players at 7-1. and one. And Christian Calcano is up one game. That is the king of the hill table, by the way. So even though he's 7-1, Calcano is the king of the hill. Wow, here we go. Yeah, key turn for Paulo here. You know, Matt Sperling is tapped out, but he's finally starting to find his land drops and make some more creatures. And that Vampiric Rites, along with the Blighted Step, is going to threaten to gain him a lot of life and a lot of cards as the game goes along, especially in conjunction with the Stone, uh, sorry, with the um, uh, Serene Steward. So this is really Paulo's opportunity to strike. And with Matt Sperling down to 13, he may have to think about making some chump blocks here, which is great for Paulo, because any creature that dies this turn is a creature that doesn't get sacrificed to vampiric rites as the game goes on. Paulo, just placid. Yep, I've attacked. What will you what will you do? Also especially important to get an attack in while that Nirkana Cutthroat doesn't have death touch right. and can't gain it. And I assume we have a land I think we have a landfall trigger this turn. Yeah, we on, do. on the so that's a first he so the whip tail is just nothing's happening there. This is that's great for Paulo if he can get a trade there, yeah, between yeah. the Shadow Skull recruit and that Nirkana Cut. That was the Undo Champion, by the way. Oh, Undo Champion, I'm sorry. Yeah, and there is a McKinney Slide Runner. There is a sheer drop in hand for Matt Sperling. So he can deal with that, uh, the whip tail. Sure. 
And down oh. comes Retreat to Emeria. Wow, look at that. Retreat to Emeria, make an ally. Off the landfall trigger. But Sperling falls to seven here. He's still got that Ugin's insight in hand. Did he draw a second island? He did not. He drew a wave wing elemental, which is quite capable of finishing off this game. And he's just going to play the Wave Wing Elemental and pass the turn. <laughs> so Evolving Wilds makes another token, gets a second black source for Sparling. Who, who's sitting on a fistful of removal here now? Grasp, Sheer Drop, and Bone Splinters. So despite being on seven life, not actually in too much danger here. He could, for example, bone splinters away a token to take care of that wave wing elemental, uh, or if he needs to, simply gain ten life from he the just drew, step. He just drew another land. So he gets a free free fodder for his bone splinters, just playing that land if he wants it. Yeah, it's a pretty powerful engine that Matt Sperling's deck has developed here. Every land he plays is an extra creature. Every creature. It represents an extra two life from the Blighted Step when he's ready to cash that in, uh, or an extra card and a life from Vampiric Rites. And of course, anytime he's gaining life along the way, <gasps> that's a plus one plus one counter from Serene Steward. What, is, what does it take to get players to play life gain? It seems like you figured it <laughs> out, Ian. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite archetypes in the format. It, it, this was actually one of the most talked about archetypes by a lot of the pros coming in and, and over between Madison and now mm -hmm. was that the black-white life gain deck was, was something that they really wanted to be in. And it looks like Matt landed in with both feet. See him mopping this game up with a Defiant Bloodlord. Yeah, that could be super powerful with that Blighted Step. Judges. Encourage Matt Sperling to make a play. So he makes another token. Brings his creature count up to six. He's going to Demon's Grasp. The wave wing elemental. I think we're going to see him bone splinter which creature? Maybe the nettle drone. I, well, that's the that's the one that's threatening to do the most damage. He's <laughs> like, I will make a play. I just don't. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the the whip tail is also a consideration here, just because you know it threatens to chomp away at Matt's creatures. But maybe he figures, you know, Paula will run out of lands eventually, and the nettle, the nettle drone is the more consistent source of damage. So another wave wing elemental for Apollo. I mean, probably what Matt was thinking so much about that turn is, you know, he could have just bone splinters and left up the mana to use the uh, blighted step. To or he could have, or he could have even blighted stepped before he bone splinters for two extra life there. Right. Yep. That that too. And the and reason that is a consideration is because. With Matt Sperling at six mana, or sorry, six life and tapped out, Paulo's attack here is going to force chump blocks, and that really takes away from the synergy that Matt has going with the Vampiric Rites and the Blighted Step and all of his creatures out. All right, Finkel fans, bad news. Dan Ward has evened up the series, but good news for the Dan Ward fans. Uh, he's evened up that match one game apiece on the back table. So Paulo is... Trying to figure out what the attack is. Oh, the attack is everybody. Here it comes. Not final. 
So not final, says Matt Sperling. So what he wants to do is start lining up blocks, look at how they're going to play out, and then figure out, you know, where, where he's going to end up. So he starts, he's going to start moving his creatures around, but uh, trying to just figure out what the best situation is and what the implications are of each kind of block. No land has been played by Paulo this turn. So belligerent, you know, shields are down sort of on the belligerent whiptail uh, and the slide runner too. I, th I think Matt's going to want to take this opportunity to make some, some efficient trades. What he doesn't want to do, well. So he's going to take one trample from the slide runner and one from the net nettled uh, from the Kozilek Sentinel. But he is going to clear off a significant amount of Paulo's threats. Yeah, I like these blocks a lot. I'm sure Matt's sad to give up on some creatures given what he has uh, going on on the board, but now's not the time to be greedy with, you know, his deck seems about to turn the, the corner as far as uh, starting to gain a lot of life and kind of bring things back into, into stability. And just making these trades here is going to clear the way. Give him some breathing room to develop a little bit. So Matt Sperling goes to four. Wave Wing Elemental comes down. And that Wave Wing Elemental is huge news. Represents five damage in the air with a land from Paulo. And Matt Sperling, of course, used his Demon's Grasp and his Bone Splinters last turn. Yeah, there is not a Bone Splinters in his hand. The, the tool has not been updated yet. He has a Sheer Drop, a Defiant Blood Lord, and a card he drew this turn. The problem with the Shear Drop is he actually has to take a hit from the Wavering Elemental before he can use that. Um, Which <laughs> is, is difficult for him to do. He can gain four life this turn. Yeah, or he can sacrifice a token to the Vampiric Rites and gain one. Um, he could do that twice to survive a hit from the Wavering Elemental. He's got a... Stonehaven Medic was the draw. So with only six lands, not enough to play the Defiant Blood Lord just yet. He also can't play the Stonehaven Medic and Sacrifice Bladed step, step, so just a little bit short of what he wants to do this turn. We might see him play... Okay, he's opting to Sacrifice first. I was going to say he might see him play the Stonehaven Medic and then leave up four mana to use the Vampiric Rites twice, so and that would let him survive a turn. Then decide um, whether I want to play the white. Is that right? So. Oh, for which trigger? For this so trigger. You, you're activating this. So I'm going to gain one and draw one as part of the resolution, then the trigger goes on the stack. Yeah, right. so this okay. resolves first. Just, why is that? Because um, you sacrifice, this goes on the stack. This is no, not well, well, I, It's on gaining life, you're right. Yeah. So then, yeah. Yeah, then that will resolve. Yeah. Okay, and then you hear from Chris Richter, the table judge there, how that's working out. Looks like he drew a Colostria Healer. Oh, well, that's fairly nice. Gains him a life, puts him out of range of the Wave Wing Elemental. Does he want to leave... White open or black open here? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gain one, you lose one. Right, because presumably on the next turn, he's going to, assuming Paulo draws a land, which is sort of the thing that Matt's playing around here, he's going to need to also block those Kozilek Sentinels. And then he plays the Stonehaven Medic. So his shields are down. One card? Two cards. <laughs> Pair of Ugin's insights in hand for Paulo Vito Domodorosa. He gets in for three and passes the turn back to Sperling. Wow, key, key <laughs> turn here for Matt Sperling. Oh He's got to feel great on tapping this, here. This is just going to be an insane. Look at this turn. Land. Play a land. Make an ally trigger this ally trigger. Four. Oh, wow. Retreat to Ameria with Colastria <laughs> Healer. That is some nice value. He's going to be able to sheer drop. I have a target now on my trigger. He's thinking about resolving the life gain trigger for the Decline. Serene Steward. He declines. Okay. And we're going to see a sheer drop on the flyer here. Almost certainly.
had the mana to awaken that. Yeah, he could have also just played the Defiant Bloodlord that turn. Of course, that being risky, something like a Clutch of Currents, bouncing it would be super bad news. Uh, so I like the way that, that Matt's played this turn. He's a, a nice balance of kind of pulling his life total back up, but not leaving himself too vulnerable. Sacrifices the token ally, draws a card, has the mana to put something. It doesn't put matter. I'm going to gain a life with this. <laughs> so it went six. Looks like he picked up a Zulaport cutthroat there. Oh, my gosh. Yet more synergy. Wow. Wow, this, this deck is awesome. The engines are firing here. Play an ally. Trigger. You, you lose one, I gain one. Another Stonehaven Medic in hand. So what's awesome about this for Sperling is he doesn't even need to worry about attacking. How am I going to break through? Not even in consideration <laughs> right. because he has his win condition already set up for him. He's got Defiant Bloodlord. Once that comes down, he just needs to get enough creatures and sacrifice Blighted Step, and that'll make Paulo lose as much life as Matt Sperling gains. Oh, my gosh. There's Shatter Skull Recruit from Paulo. He's like, do I attack here? I don't see any no. any profitable attacks here for Paulo. Oh, he may he may have passed her. This may be oh this is end step, end step uh, spurling. Yeah, he's gonna gain a life. Eight to seventeen. Does he put a token anywhere? I'm going to gain one, draw one. Before I gain one, draw one. I'm gonna I get to drain for one. Okay. So you go to sixteen. I go to nine. Then that trigger resolves. <laughs> So I go to 10. Sure. Sorry, and then from this resolving. And I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on my Stuart. Okay. There you hear. And we are getting very close to a, a channel fireball <laughs> kill here. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, every land represents an ally now. And every ally. And, and every ally represents a drain <laughs> of life. It also represents a fireball kill at the end Defiant with the Defiant Bloodlord. Right. Yeah, right. I'll play this. I'm going to make an ally. <laughs> then what he... You're at, uh, on... I want to make this deck and take it to F and M. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this looks sweet. We'll do a deck tech on him during the standard rounds. Yeah, did he? I think he missed. He actually missed a Defiant Bloodlord there. I said go, so I, I think I missed. Yeah, that. he he missed, he missed the. He got to actually drain an extra point of life, but That's it doesn't okay. matter. There's plenty Paulo's more where the, that came yeah, from. Paulo saw the writing <laughs> on the wall. Wow. Very impressive. That's a cool deck. That is the deck people have been talking about. All right. We'll be right back with more magic right after these messages. Ultra Pro is the place to go for all your magic accessories. With card sleeves, deck boxes, play mats, and portfolios showing off the best magic art, Ultra Pro is the standard in safe storage. Visit ultrapro.com for more information. Friday Night Magic has expanded to include all formats. Get ready for Commander, Legacy, or even Conspiracy drafts. Check out your local store for details and share your FNM stories by using the hashtag MTGFNM. Visit magic.wizards.com slash FNM for more information. All right. So we are going to look in right now at game three between John Finkel and Dan Ward. Both of these players are at six and two. There you see the board. Tell, tell me what we're looking at here, Ian. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I see another retreat to Ameria. Yeah, that card has been very impressive so far here on camera. See a couple of uh, awakened lands there for John. Yeah, it looks like uh, he's got the blue-white sort of flyer tempo with awaken kind of deck that we've seen before. Yep. And here we see Alter's Reap. Crashing in with a couple of islands. So, so it looks like a, a similar, but maybe not as high quality as we saw from Matt Sperling deck here from uh, Dan Ward. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
Retreat to Ameria does a lot of hard work. Good. You see John just... Uh, trigger, trigger. Oh, that's double Calastria healer. Plays a land, gets double Calastria healer triggers off of his ally that comes into play. Gets landfall. I mean, John is going in the wrong direction here. He is down to nine. And then has gone to 16 without ever entering the red zone here. This this black-white deck is insane. Yeah, if you get a good version of it, it, it can be very, very I'm never impressive. going to get this in the coverage draft tonight, am I? <laughs> Everyone's going to be fighting for this. Looks like an Andu Great Horn coming in. Looking for the, looking for the planar outburst in John's deck. Puts just puts a creature in the way. John is playing empty-handed here. He's hell bent. I have a hard time imagining. Dan Ward not being able to pull this out from this position. Alter's Reap also looks great in this deck. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you get the Retreat to Ameria version where you're making lots of tokens. And you see that our main match has gotten off to a blistering start. In the upper right-hand corner. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, I don't know if I can keep looking at this. This, <laughs> this uh, I'm happy for Dan here, but it's it's painful to watch. Let's go back to Matt Sperling versus Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa uh, and see how that plays out here in game two with Matthew Sperling up one game to none. All right. So, wow, this is a, this is a little bit of a smoother draw here for Apollo. He's got the Kozilek Sentinel. He's got the Valakid Predator. He's got the Belligerent Whiptail. Two, three, four. He's got two islands. Should he find his Ugin's Insight? Sheer Drop takes out the Predator. And uh, we had a little bit of a, a little bit of life gain here going on for, for Matt Sperling. Landfall. <laughs> there it is. Ugin's Insight. Okay. Finally makes an appearance after being stranded in Paulo's hand in two copies last Gets game. Gets to scry four, because that's the casting cost of the belligerent whiptail, and then he's going to keep. He gets to draw three cards, and he's just like, I'll take these three off the top. Those are good enough. And in comes the first striking whiptail. Oh, Lithomancer's focus. Wow, that's huge. There you see Lithomancer's focus. Plus two, plus two until end of turn. Prevent all damage. So nice first strike. Uh, by the way, uh, our only undefeated player, Eric, Eric Severson at 8-0, is now 9-0 and remains undefeated. He beat Gil Guillermo uh, Merjam uh, at uh, one of the back tables here in the feature match area. There you see Sperling's hand. He's got the healer, the cutthroat, the voracious null. Pair of Nettle Sentinels for Paulo and gets in for three. I'm sorry, Nettle Drones gets in with his Kozlak Sentinel. So is Nettle like a, a word for untapping? I was just wondering that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I never noticed the connection before. It keeps reminding me of the Nettle Sentinel, which untaps whenever you cast a, a green creature. There is complete disregard. Exiles one of the drones. Here comes a wave wing elemental. Sperling gains a life. He's got his retreat out. Yeah, with a class tree healer and a Zulaport cutthroat in hand and retreat in play, looks like Matt Sperling's well on his way to, to setting up for a similar board state to last game but under a little bit more pressure from Paula yes. with a, a more aggressive start this game. A game when you lose one. 
Here's the Class Tree Healer. A common, so if you're thinking about drafting this deck of Friday Night Magic, you will see Class Tree Healers. And you think about the sequence of plays last game, if he had uh, drawn the unified front towards the back end of that sequence. Mm -hmm. Wave Wing Elemental crashing in here. It's, it's pretty been pretty impressive for Paulo so far in this matchup. Yeah. Um, normally, I don't think of Wave Wing Elemental as a card I'm super happy uh, to be relying on. It's pretty expensive and slow, but it does hit very hard. All right, Touch of the Void is going to take out the Clash Tree Healer, never to return again. And enough mana for Paulo to follow up with an Andu Champion. Sprawling goes to nine. There's a land that'll provide another chump blocker. Right, which way do I gain more life? <laughs> He's got Assassin, Cutthroat, Null, and the land. But things, things looking not so great for Matt Sperling this game. Almost regardless of what he does this turn, he's going to be facing some, some bad uh, attacks and blocks from Paulo next turn. And uh, looking at our feature match area, it is indeed uh, Dan Ward over John Finkel. The writing was on the wall there. Also, uh, results, uh, Christian Calcano remains our king of the hell. He's 8-1, and one, and he defeated Jacob Wilson, dropping him to 7-2. Okay. So. Down comes the Zillaport Cutthroat. And, and, the, and the Assassin. Uh, is that the Assassin or the Voracious Null? No, that's the Assassin. The Assassin there. Yeah, the Null is much more gruesome looking. <laughs> So the tricky thing for Sperling is, like, I think he wants to try to leverage the death touch of that assassin, but I don't think he's going to have time. Well, he, he does have he does have the, uh, the the blighted land there, so he can, if he can live through this turn, can sort of reset himself almost up to his starting life total, the blighted right. stat. The question is, how many creatures is he going to be forced to trade off this turn? And a land from Paulo. Oh, well, the answer is none. Wow. Okay, I'm surprised Paulo didn't attack with a little bit more there, um, just to kind of pare down ah, the number and there's of creatures another that land. has. Okay, so this may be the tor the corner being turned for Matt Sperling. That's creature number six. So that's twelve life. Can gain a 13th life with the healer. Chump blocks end up being a little uh, costly for Paulo also with with the uh, Zulaport Enforcer in play. Or Zulaport Cutthroat. Mm -hmm. Vigilance from the McKinney Patrol. Check. Let's that uh, Nirkana assassin attack. Nice. Go. I'll respond. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve life. Okay. So, so Nettle Drone goes to shoot Mad Sperling. And Sperling says, I would like to go to 14 instead of two. Just the one blighted step in the deck for Matt Sperling. Oh, is that a Radiant Flames in hand? Oh, interesting. Now, was that that was, did he start that? He did not start it, uh, presumably because of the all of his nettle drones and low toughness creatures like that. But uh, it seems like the perfect thing against uh, Matt Sperling's deck. <laughs> this is well. Although on this particular board, it doesn't deal with the uh, Stonehaven Medic or the McKinney Patrol or the Nurkana Assassin. Assassin. So we'll sweep away a lot of those creatures, but 
unfortunately. And, and the Zulu Park Cutthroat also makes that a little uh, awkward. That's true, too, yeah. I think Paulo's going to want to fire that off at some point, but not quite yet. He can sort of wait a couple more turns to get a little bit more value. And we don't know if he also sided in a, a third color at all, just thinking about, you know, because you know the ally deck has a lot of these three toughness creatures. Oh, my gosh. Look at the card that Matt Sperlin just drew. Wow. March, March from, from the, the tomb. tomb. <laughs> That's exciting. This is a card I don't see played a lot in Limited, but <laughs> no. it's got a ton of potential, especially in a deck like Matt's. So Voracious Null comes down. Now you can sacrifice another creature, put two counters on Voracious Null. Cool. So we could see uh, one of his allies going away to set up that march from the tomb. Although the Clash Tree Healer was exiled by Touch of the Void, so you really see the value of a card like that here, where you know that coming back with march from the tomb would be disgusting. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think likely what we'll see is... Paulo probably waiting as long as he can before firing off the Radiant Flames, and then Matt Sperling matching it with a March from the Tomb afterwards. I think Matt's in a fairly good spot right now. Okay, there's our landfall trigger. Get in for five. We'll go up to 12, down to seven. Yep. Gains one, loses five. A not sustainable race. That's true, but importantly now the Voracious Null gives Matt a uh, sacrifice outlet so he can start getting triggers yeah. off the Zillaport Cutthroat when he wants to. And now, now uh, Apollo's thinking about using the Radiant Flames. Shoots with the Nettle Drone. Six. Two colors for Converge. Here's Radiant Flames. So this is going to get so the cutthroat, the null. Drain you for, for yep. 10 to 13. So the, <laughs> you see the swing that the cutthroat brings about. And that is going to, this is going to be pretty, is that another Calastria healer? So Paulo, no cards in hand. Really hoping that Radiant Flames gives him the opportunity to start making some profitable attacks. Close out this game. Oh, no, it's Vampiric Rites. Oh. <laughs> so what's our ally count here in uh, Matt's graveyard? Is it just the Zillaport Cutthroat right now? I, I'm, not, I'm not certain. Uh, the Narcon Assassin is still there. Seven. Get in for three. Play a second wave wing, wing elemental. Okay. One draw card. Eight. It's gonna sacrifice the assassin. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's just these these One three. Oh, an evolving wilds too. <laughs> That's two two triggers for <laughs> Retreat to Ameria. But double double Wave Wing Elemental represents 10 damage next turn. This is a little bit of a tricky position. I drew, he drew a Serene Steward as well. But how many ways does Matt actually have to gain life this turn? Well, he chooses to make a okay. here comes March from the tomb so this will bring back all those allies which is fantastic but and he's basically just hoping he's hoping that there's Apollo no land off land. the top and there is, is a land. <laughs> Get in for oh ten. my goodness nine, right? yeah. at nine life able to gain one wow. life but taking ten damage Wow. Wave Wing Elemental flies over and steals a game that Matt Sperling had to feel like he was... Uh, he, he had to know that 
the land he knew the landfall trigger was was, was lethal, but yeah. had to feel like he he had like the game within his grasp there. Yeah, definitely. Right, right on the verge of kind of um, getting a irrevocable control over that game. Yeah, you see the looming specter of Chris Richter over the table. These are the uh, the last two players going in the feature match area. So Wave Wing Elemental has been MVP so far this match for Paulo. Yeah, there are there are only eleven minutes left in this match, by the way. Which is uh, doesn't isn't great for Matt Sperling, I think, who kind of really needs this convoluted board setup. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He's probably hoping for Paulo to have a little bit of an awkward draw early on. You know, Matt's deck takes it's powerful, but it, it takes a lot of setup. There's a lot of moving parts going on there, and he needs the time to get those all in play and find them all. Yeah. Uh, so, so something interesting. I, I talked to some of the guys who are doing uh, the draft viewer, and we're recording the picks for this okay. draft and uh, talk to the play people who were recording the drafts on either side of Paulo. So we saw Paulo sort of go into blue on Ugin's Insight uh, with his second pick. Uh, so blue rare. And, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the rares get picked over the commons and uncommons. And Ugin's Insight's one of those, but it doesn't get picked over uh, Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Oh, yeah. And so there's blue players on either side of him in the draft. And... One has one Sky Spawner, the other has two Sky Spawners. Oh, no. <laughs> so he, he was really getting squoze for blue, but you know what? He was able to find those Wave Wing Elementals and make those guys do work for him. So there's a uh, Colostri Healer. For Matthew Sperling, and it swings the life total 21-19 without ever entering the red zone. Always nice. Apollo plays the second land. No uh, Kozilek Sentinel for him. There is the Blighted Fen. It doesn't look like there are any planes uh, in the future for Matt Sparling. Plays the uh, Zulaport Cutthroat. Third land. Ah. Herald of Kozilek. Yeah, that is a stop sign. Yeah, plus it's really going to turbocharge Paulo's draw. I mean, he has, we know, we've seen he has a lot of Devoid cards in his deck. So he might be able to play two spells next turn. There is a second Colostria <laughs> healer. But Matt's brilliant with a, a pretty good draw here, although notably lacking in white mana so far. Oh, but there's a Radiant Flames in hand for Paulo. Wow. Oh, that is backbreaking. Gets a, this is a drain for three for, by Matt Sperling there. See, he draws his Prairie Stream, which is uh, there simply for his unified front. He is also a source of white mana now. Matt Sperling with Prairie Stream, a Swamp, Serene Steward and Demon's Grasp in hand. Yeah, decides to play the Steward. So the Demon's Grasp will buy him a little bit time of time, but... I mean, let me tell you, if he draws a March from the Tomb, it's going to get... That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, that's the, the one card he really needs here. Yeah, that card becomes like a Fireball. Kozilek Sentinel is the play. May have overpaid for it. No, it was a, that's a nettle drone there. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a nettle drone. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, you're right. Discounted with the Herald yeah. of Kozlak. No attack there from the Herald, notably. Um, maybe playing around sheer drop. Stonehaven medic comes down for Matt Sperling, and in comes the Herald. Nettle Drone's exhausted when it plays against this deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a voracious null. But I think we're going to see Demon's Grasp on the Wave Wing Elemental. Yeah, Matt Sperling has seen how dangerous that card can be left unchecked. You know, and he's got the ability now to, to just with the Stonehaven Medic and the Serene Steward, to build up his walls on the ground, but he needs a second white source to be able to do that. Ugin's insight here for Paulo. It looks like he's contemplating, maybe, yes. 
He's also thinking, he's, you know, I think he's going to advance his board and he's going to play the Shatter Skull Recruit. We shall see. <laughs> he could go either way. Like, yeah, oh, either one's cards. a fantastic play. <laughs> he draw, there's another Ugin's Insight on top. And Paulo just pulling into a massive lead in terms of board presence and cards in hand. But doesn't have a lot of aggression right now. Could leave Matt Sperling a window of opportunity. Matt Sperling hopes a second white source flies through that window. There's a voracious null. And of course, at any time, March from the Tomb could come off the top for, for Matt yeah. Sperling, bringing back the, the double healer and cutthroat in his graveyard. So, so Nettle, Nettle, Nettle Drone is racing against Stone Haven <laughs> Medic here right now. But we're going to get a Shatter Skull Recruit. I'm going to get a shoot, shoot you, and then play Kozilek Sentinel, untap Nettle Drone. Sounds like time on the floor has been called. There's a slightly different clock for these players. They have just over five minutes left. The Kindy Patrol. Yeah. Everyone's vigilant, but they're not getting in. <laughs> I, you know, it's possible that this game could end in a draw. There is, there is a blighted step in play. Yeah, that is true. We'll see what Paulo can come up with. I think the, the onus is on him to kind of... <laughs> Be aggressive. He's, he's going to come up with scrying for five. All right. <laughs> I think I saw a wave wing elemental. Yeah, in and, that and, an, and a nettle drone. So he puts those two on top, pushes three lands, it looked like, and draws nettle drone, wave wing elemental, and valicate predator. Yep. Shoots Matt, plays a drone. Untaps his drone. No attacks. There's that planes yeah. you were oh. talking about. No. Plays that planes with the snap of someone who's ca who's played lands with a retreat to a merry and play a lot. <laughs> so it's a little, little more hollow now, but. So the reason that planes is key is that'll allow him to activate Stonehaven medic. Uh, gain a life, and then use the trigger from Serene Steward to put a plus one, plus one counter on one of his creatures. However, that's you know a powerful interaction, but pretty slow given what he's facing down from Paulo here, and that full, nearly full grip in Paulo's hand. You see, he's holding Touch of the Void, Spell Shrivel, <laughs> Wave Wing Elemental, and Adu Champion. Just uh, a ton of cards. Yeah, Matt says that's fine. I'm at 15. <clears throat> Here is the flyer. So there he Game is. On yep. Gets a counter on the McKinney Patrol. He's like, I only needed one more planes. <laughs> the third one. 14. And the nettle drones are doing their work. Matt goes down to 14. Again, he's got another eight showing with his uh, blighted step. But landfall. Nine. Yep, drops Matt to nine. There's the Predator. <laughs> There's an Andu champion. On this. And those Nettle drones sort of looming there, representing yeah. two damage end of turn and another two on Paulo's turn, plus with the spell shrivel on Paulo's turn. I was hand. just going to say, if a anything Matt tries to do, it's, it's just he's going to counter it just to get two extra damage in with his Nettle drones, or attempt to counter it, I should yeah. say. There's Vampiric Rites. Mm. Potentially a start to something. 
We may have to see Matt Sperling cash in his Blighted Step this turn. And then I think his game plan is to use Vampiric Rites and try to find March from the Tomb. I hope he has enough mana to get yeah. it past the Spell <laughs> Shrubble. Right, right now he has exactly nine lands, of course, when he sacrifices One of them is the going away step. this turn. <laughs> yeah, that'll put him at eight, which is just not quite enough for the Spell Shrivel. But, of course, all this is assuming he can survive long enough to find that March of the Tomb in the first place. Yeah, that, that may be, that I may very well be moot. He can get to 16 this turn. Yeah. 17 then with the activation of the Medic. So, yeah, we're thinking in terms of what, what are the ways that Matt Sperling could possibly pull out of this game with, with the idea in mind that he is, he is very far behind at this point and definitely needs a big play to bring him back into this game. Believe me, both of these players will want this game to end with three points being awarded and not two. <laughs> He's considering getting in with a Nettle Drone here. Yes. That is time in the round. round. Time has been called in the round. So this is turn zero. means that Paula will have two more turns after this. Matt Sperling will have three more turns. Tough turn for Paulo here. A lot of combat math to have to do. <laughs> He's like, oh, I forgot about the... <laughs> Predator, ah, that's fine. Okay. In comes the champion, the Wave Wing Elemental, and the Shatter Skull Recruit. Shatter Skull Recruit, of course, has Menace, so that requires two creatures to block it. The Wave Wing Elemental is flying. Nothing can block that right now. So the interesting decision for Matt Sperling here is, does he want to block and then sacrifice some creatures to the Vampiric Rites, or does he want to <clears throat> use the Blighted Step before those creatures go away? I think... Hmm. You see pa Paolo with a Boiling Earth that also came in out of the sideboard. So double block the recruit, puts the patrol in front of the champion. Block. I'll put Dresha's new first. Okay, so we're going to sacrifice the Blighted Step first. Penny. Go to 16. Thank you. Six. 16. Last year. You wrote here and then you wrote here. I have 16, 12. Yeah, it should be 16, 12. Not 18. Oh. Okay. Oh, Paolo, Paolo may have had... Uh, a misread oh. on what the life total was, and it may have been that he wanted to attack with all his creatures there. Because, again, he's got Touch of the Void and the Nettle Drones. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was wondering why Paulo wasn't contemplating a bigger or, or even all-out attack. Uh, and if he had the wrong life total written down, that makes a lot more sense. Here comes Boiling Earth. <laughs> I'm going to sack one of these and draw a card. Uh, This has a damage on it, correct? Yeah. So I draw one wow. One. So the Boiling Earth just clears everything away because they uh, 
got just over uh, the Andy champion, and then uh, a land gets animated for Apollo, who still has mana up for Spell Shrivel. Wow. And that's the match. Extends the hand. Paulo Vitor Domitorosa goes to eight and one here. Matt Sperling's still in great shape at uh, seven and two, but wow, that was that was uh, fascinating to watch. I mean, we yeah. watched him draft. You know, there were a couple cards that were like, wow, maybe, you know, you're not super thrilled to be playing those in a blue-red Devoid deck. Mm -hmm. Wave Wing Elemental, maybe. Yeah. Um, belligerent Whiptail, but, you know, kind of like a mixed landfall and Devoid strategy there. Right. Um, so Fort not Paul. going full in on the Devoid synergies, but just, you know, he's got quality of cards, and those Wave Wing Elementals, despite being a little bit inefficient, did a ton of work for him that game, just flying over the top. And if you're going to play two Ugin's Insights, you can keep your lands flowing if that's what you need to sort of get through. Definitely true, yeah. And he had enough removal, and the, and the Nettle Drones, look, I mean, they were they were really keeping him at uh, par with the life gain of Matt Sperling there until he was able to just completely overwhelm the board and draw, like, six extra cards that game. Yeah, definitely. What I really liked were the um, Boiling Earth and, ra and Radiant Flames out of the side. Yeah, those were super key there. Definitely so. going to his board. Uh, we're going back to the news desk, though, and uh, Rich Hagon. Thanks very much to Brian David Marshall and to Ian Jeep. That was an amazing round. You know, I'd love to see Matt Sperling here at the wall going through every pick in the draft viewer. We might see if we can get that sorted for you next round. So, some results from the top table. Yuta Takahashi, King of the Fairies. Vendillion is his uh, Twitter handle. Uh, he's 8-1. and one. He beat Reed Duke with his A, A- minus deck. 9 out of 10. Well, it's 0-1. That deck right now. Reduke at seven and two. You'd attack at Hashi up to eight and one. Chris Calcano was in the feature match area, but we didn't get to him. He won over Jacob Wilson. Uh, Wilson heading back to school on Monday, seven and two, still in great shape. Calcano eight and one with the breakout standard deck of the weekend coming later in the day. Undefeated in standard, he's got to feel great if he can win one more round in limited. Uh, Matt Sperling seven and two. Paolo Vida Domino Rosa eight and one. Sideboarding, who knew, turns out to be quite important, even in limited and then uh eric severson nine and O, oh, your tournament leader still over at uh, gear mayam the second pod that is messy five uh, levels within this luca mani seven two kenji samura eight one ryochi tamada of japan eight one over patrick chapin six two and one sam farmer atman one seven one one that was marcio carvalho who was paired up into that second pod six and three now for the portuguese man ben rubin hall of famer seven two martin muller eight one that's the scores on the doors there but yesterday we brought you part one of the magic online draft archetypes but what comes after part one shockingly it's part two <laughs>